Hi everyone, welcome to another tutorial from Simple Coding. So as you can see from the playlist, we have covered the shopping cart and we have also covered the Stripe integration in the uh, in the back end. And today we'll go ahead and we'll integrate the front end so you can see both back end and front end together. If I give you a demo, it will be so if you go to simple coding our site and as you can see that we have two items in the cart and we confirm the order and then we get this page where we have we see that we have to put this number and we go to the payment page And we can see that the two products are displayed in the here. So we'll integrate this part today in this tutorial. If you have if you haven't watched the backend tutorial, you can watch this tutorial for the backend. And today we're going to implement the uh, front end. Also, we'll integrate the backend and front end together. So first of all, you should have the Stripe dashboard where you can find both the publishable key and the private key. So go to, go to the test mode and go to the developers tab and you'll find the API keys here so you can see that we have one publishable key and we have one secret key all right so we'll use these two to create this page so first of all let me show you the back end and the front end till now so in the back end, this is the front end, so git branch. So we are now in the shopping cart finish branch. And now we'll make a new branch, git checkout, b, YouTube, checkout, final. So let's first run the backend code also. So we, have, we are now in the checkout branch in the backend. So we'll replace the secret key. So if you go to the PS keys and you can reveal the test key, which is the secret key. So we copied the key and we will paste the key in the in the application the properties file. We'll replace we'll place the key here. And we, as you can see that we have placed, we have made the base oil as 8081. So let's first run the backend first. The backend will run on 8080 port and the front end will run on 8081 port. So now our backend is running. We can see the APIs in the localhost 8080 and swagger.ty HTML. We can see our backend and you can see that we have created this checkout session control like this API checkout session where we pass the price, product ID, product name, quantity and season user ID. Although user ID is optional, you don't need to pass the user ID. And you get a response of the season ID. This is generated by the Stripe. So if I want to, if I walk you through the code, it will be So we have this controller 
and we have this API create checkout session where we get the list of this checkout item DTO and we create a session for in the order service we define the base URL and the failure URL the successful and the failure URL so these are two pages that we will create today in our front end and then we pass the card we pass the mode payment we pass we make the cancel url we add we create the success url and we build it and we get the uh, season and we pass the season in the, in our controller and from the season we get the season id and we pass it in the stripe response and that's it so this is the api for the backend so today we'll integrate this backend with the front end so in our front end we have uh, let's run the front end now npm run serve and today we'll use the this backend of our local backend not this one we'll use our local backend to see the fully integration end to end so we'll replace it with the local host 8080 this is the base url for the backend so we'll use this this base url today So to summarize, our frontend is running on 8081 port and our backend is running on 8080 port and we are specifying our, our backend in the base URL here and we are specifying our frontend in our backend code in the application.properties file. You can see that we are specifying the frontend code as 8080 one port all right so so let's now run the code and see so as you can see that uh, we need to make a few changes because in the home page we are calling the, the product apis and the category api but we see that there is some error it should be category and product so we, we made some oh our product api is working not working correctly so let's fix it first so in our back end first let's go to the category controller and to get the list of categories we just have to pass We are just passing the, there is nothing after the category URL. So we just need to, in the backend, we just need to make it slash. And restart the code. Like I made some small mistake in the uh, URL so now it should be working so if you refresh the page now so look at the 80 category okay we, we made a small mistake here it should be category so let's now run it again. Okay. So now we see that there is a course error. Uh, because our we have to specify in our backend that we can that the frontend can access the URL 
So for that we will create one file in our backend to allow us so that the frontend can make request in the backend. So we will create a file here. It will be web config. And we will annotate it with a annotation of configuration. And we will make it a bean. Public web mvc configurer course configurer and we will allow return new web mvp configurer and overwrite the add course mapping method and we will add registry dot add mapping and course registry no it will be will in mapping off like will allow anything and the methods that will allow will be so first we will allow the origins and we will allow everything so ideally you should only pass the the front end url but for now it's okay to to white list anything for now and we can make uh, we can make the allowed methods as get put post patch or delete And you can also make options. So to summarize, we need to have this configuration file so that our our front end can connect with our back end. So our back end need to be specified which which front end URLs can be accessed and which methods can be also accessed. So we can make the rules here. So for now, to make our life simple, we are allowing all the uh, pattern and we are allowing all the origins and we are allowing all the methods for now. But if you if you want, you can make it more secure. And now if you rerun the code, now we should be able to see our backend connect to the frontend. So we made an error here. So here we need to pass, we need to put the semicolon and now let's run it again. So now it's running again and now let's see if our front end is working. Yeah, so now you can see that our API is giving the correct response and our front end can connect to the back end. And now you can see that we have top categories, we have some products. And we can add the product in the cart. We already have two items in the cart. Okay, so now we are going to create the checkout method right now we'll create this button of checkout and 
after this we will redirect it to our checkout page so let's do it step by step so we'll also need to create two pages for success and failure as we have discussed before so we'll create three pages here So we'll first create one new folder which you can create from here in our views. We can make it payment and also you can make now here we can make two pages one is success and one is one is failure. and one is failed so let's create the success one template deep dot text center Success and export default. And we'll copy the same thing for the failure. Well, this is the failed success and this is the failed for now I'll register these two pages in the router so you copy it and paste it So path will be payment success and name will be payment and component will be success let's now import this one from views payment Success and we also copy the field. And we'll also make one more router for fail and success. Success and fail pages payment failed Uh, 
and we put the field hmm. all right so we can see the two pages here local host 81 payment success we should make it cc Okay, success and failed. So you can see that these pages are these two pages are displayed here. And if you remember in, in our back end, we specified two these two pages in the uh, here. You can see that we have payment success and payment failed. So the thing what happens is that first we make a request let me see if I can find the image for you guys yeah so as you can and our front end make a request of create checkout season and it sends the cut items and the back end then send these cut items to the stripe and it creates a season and the stripe returns the season ID and the backend now then return the session ID to the frontend. After that, the frontend redirect the user to the checkout page. And then the Stripe after payment, the Stripe redirect you to the success or fail page depending on the status of the of the payment. So as you can see that we have already made this backend part where we send we, we have this API where we send the items and we create the season and get the season ID and return the season ID to the front end. So as you can see before already that that is already made. So we already have this uh, create season API where you get the list of the checkout items where and we create the season using the the stripe apis we pass the stripe api key which is the private key and also we specify the payment success and payment failed uh, urls and after that we'll in in our front end we have created these two pages and now we'll create the checkout page and then we will call this backend api and then it will work like that so now let's go to the card page and here we will create one button So in the cart page, we will create a button of checkout after the total cost. Type button class will be button button primary and confirm and at the click we'll make a function called checkout. Order and 
as you can see we have this button confirm order and now we need to create this method checkout and we will also make a function checkout So we'll go to a page which will be this dot router dot push name will be checkout. So this page also we need to create. We haven't created this page yet. We'll create this page. So let's make one, let's get one more page here. We will, in the views, we'll create one more directory and let's name it checkout. And here we'll create a file. It will be checkout.view. And you can create for now. You can just create copy the same thing of the success here and make it check out. All right, and also now also register this component in the router. So we'll copy the same thing. Check out. Check out. and component will be check out we need to also import this component All right, so now if we go to the confirm order page, then we will go to this checkout page. And now as you can see from our live that we have, we have uh, so when we confirm the order, we will go to this page and where we will display this uh, card number and the CVV. So we'll create this page, uh, like in the checkout, we'll uh, mention these things first. So H3. You will be redirected to payment page. And trip dot alert. Alert primary. while making payment use 
card number four two 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 and enter random date and CVV three digit As you can see, it's working fine and we'll create a button. Will be check out button and not at the red club click go to checkout will define the method and then we'll have make payment Let's style this page first. Alert with fifty percent. And let's make it plus margin top five percent margin left thirty percent and dot Check out button. Let's add some style here. Background color 5D 3D EC. Let's see how it looks. Okay, better. Let's just make it simple like button, button, primary, let's not waste time on the button, it's good enough and just let's keep some padding. Margin ten pixel it will be alert. All right, it's good enough for now. And let's create this method make payment. Go to checkout. We'll have a data function where we'll define the 
stripe api token and we'll define one stripe variable initially it will be empty string and then we'll have token first it will be null then we'll have so and it will be wrapped in the return and uh, let's move all this variable in the return and the methods and uh, here let's define go to checkout So let's first copy the stripe token from the api keys so we'll copy the publishable key and we'll paste it here and we'll also have a mounted section So now we'll get the this token will be local storage dot token dot get item and token and we'll initialize this dot stripe will be stripe but we have to also add a uh, library that stripe that library in the index.html will add a library of the stripe script source will be https js.stripe dot com dot slash v3 we need this library for initializing the stripe variable so in the checkout page now we can initialize stripe as stripe these dot stripe api token And also you need to add a library in the package.json npmi stripe So let's restart the server Let's add this slash Oh, maybe we need to add the window dot stripe This might work 
let's see somehow it's not uh, accepting the only stripe so we do not we need a stripe this might work so let's see so first we'll get the items from the shopping cart and then we'll pass the we'll call the checkout api so we'll define a method it will be get all items So we'll excuse dot get. So you have to also get the base URL here. So we'll define the prop. After data, we can define props. So name will be checkout and props will be base URL. start with URL cart and token will be start token and once we get it catch so once you get the response if response dot status equal to equal to 200 it means we get it true we get some response then we'll get the products let products will be response dot data and we'll create one more variable that that will be the checkout array Check out body array. So finish little be null. For let i equal to zero, i less than products dot cart items dot length i plus plus this dot checkout array dot push so we'll create object so as you can see in the api We need to pass price, product ID, product name, quantity, and user ID. For user ID is optional, so it will pass price, 
product dot cart items i dot price quantity products dot cart items i dot quantity price products dot cart items i dot price product id will be product dot cart items dot i dot product dot id already have price so then it will be product name dot product now product name as you can see let's uh, just to be uh, just to be just to show you so let's see the card item uh, object first so we have the card item object it will have oh, oh it's oh, we have to iterate through the is an array right so we'll just uh, iterate the we have the id we have the quantity and the price and name is in the product so product id product name quantity is here price is here and i think that's it we don't need to pass anything else and now we just we got this item and now we'll call the checkout in the checkout method will call the axios dot post this dot basic order order and then create Check out season. I will pass the body as this dot checkout array. Dot then response, and we will get the season ID as the response. And we'll catch it. We we'll copy this catch one like this. And in the response, we can store the session ID in the local storage. Set item. is an id response dot data dot season id and we can now call this dot stripe dot redirect to checkout So function check out and we just need to pass this an ID season ID will be so let's first print out print the the season response and then see 
which data we are getting so console dot log dot season and let's print the response dot data and now let's also console log the checkout array before you post let's also console log the checkout body array to see that if you are getting the right body or not it will be this so first we will after we get it we will call the this dot get all items and then we will call this dot go to checkout now first we will uh, no this this will be called in the mounted and once we click the button we will call this go to checkout method so let's look in the console now so we got an empty array so let's refresh this page once So if we go to the cart and confirm order, then we should call this function, right? This should be triggered, but this will only triggered when we are call the go to checkout. So let's try it, make payment. So our checkout body array is working fine, I think. We have two objects. Price is undefined, or oh, price is undefined. Why price is undefined? Let's see. Oh, it will be dot product dot price. So now let's see. We are getting array and we have the price with the product ID we have the product name is also undefined why so it will be product cut item size product dot it's only product not name but just name so let's do now clear the console and let's try it once more and we got the session ID so it's working fine so we call our backend API and you got season ID so now we just need to call this method stripe checkout season and so you see that object is like this so we have to pass the season dot ID so it should be response dot data dot season id so let's try it once again and now we are voila we are in this page where you can see the two items in the uh, in the cart and we have the prices so as you can see this there is one mistake so we uh, if we go back we'll be coming in the failed page so as you can see that this one is 189.87 so we made a rounding error so if you go to the back end and if you go to the order controller 
so when you are creating the season and when you are creating the price so we have to like we have to uh, put into 100 into parenthesis so that this one is passed in the right way so this one should be uh, in parenthesis and then it should work so if you refresh the page now and now let's go to the page one second confirm order so you can see that price is 688.87 and now if we go to this page now you can see that the price is right so let's now try to pay it and put some dummy 4242424242424242 month can be anything 01 and 25 1 to 1 anything you can put anything cart is test and now if you try to pay the payment is success and now we'll come into the success page so i hope now it all makes sense to you To summarize now, I can say one summary is more. So from the front end, we we uh, create, we call this create session checkout API. As you can see here, so we first we get the cart items, then we make this checkout body array. Then we call the create session checkout method in the backend. Hmm. So after that, the backend create the session by calling the stripe and then it gets session ID and then it pass the session ID to the front end as you can see here so first uh, we get the front session ID from the back end and then we call the redirect to checkout stripe uh, method and we pass the session ID and it redirects us to the stripe page and if you get a failure or the uh, uh, success then it, it redirects us to the success page or the failure page so i hope this is clear to you guys if you have any doubt you can send me a message in youtube or you can join our slag our channel of facebook or uh, discord and you can send me a message there and i will try to help you so as you can see now our it's working fine and the next step will be to place the order. So once you get the success page, we'll place the order and then we'll save it. So I hope this is clear to you guys and you enjoyed this video and you learned something from it. See you guys in the next video. Bye for now.